using Canvas UI Part 1. When working with WebXR, you'll notice that for a VR experience, the framework does not support the DOM. You cannot display a DOM element as part of the render. If you're using the 3GS library, then you'll find Canvas UI a useful way to show a GUI. Since Canvas UI uses a 3GS mesh to show the UI, it can be used effectively as part of the objects in a 3D scene. In this and the next video, we're going to work through a series of examples to show you how to use this versatile class in your own projects. The first thing to be aware of is Canvas UI uses two imports, 3ModuleJS and Canvas Keyboard.js. So when you're using it, make sure these are available and adjust the paths to them if necessary. The first example we'll look at is a simple Hello World one. A live version is at this address. Open app.js in the folder Canvas UI Simple. In the code, slide down to find the Create UI method. A Canvas UI mesh is simply a plane that is one by one units. In a VR world, this means it's one meter square. It has a canvas texture applied. By default, this is 512 pixels square. A canvas texture is a texture made from a canvas element. In HTML5, a canvas is a surface that can be drawn on at the pixel level. An aerial font is applied and the size of the font is 30 pixels. There is 20 pixels of padding. The font color is white and the background color is black. And the canvas will have a six pixel radius rounded corners. Having created the UI, we can use the class method update element to change the content of an element. A canvas UI always contains a body element, which by default has the type text. We'll see the different element types you can use later. The update element method takes two parameters. First, the name of the element, then the new content for this element. Here we set the text of body to hello world. After updating one or more elements, you need to call the canvas UI method update to cause the changes to be rendered. A Canvas UI instance contains a mesh property and to see it you need to position it and add it to the scene, camera or another object in your scene depending on the requirements. Usually a Canvas UI instance is created by passing a content object and a config object. Take a look at this example. Open app.js in the folder Canvas UI panel. Slide down to find the create UI method. Notice here in the config object we specify three sub objects, all of type text. Header has position top. Positions in Canvas UI can be specified as top, left, bottom, right, X and Y. They work like CSS, except position is always absolute and not inherited. If you miss out a value, it defaults to zero. So position top zero will position the header at x equals zero, y equals zero. Notice that the coordinate space starts at the top left. Header also has padding top set and height set. This adjusts where the text will appear. Footer is very similar to header. The difference being the y position is defined using bottom. The most complicated element is main. Here the height is 372. That is 512, the default size for a Canvas UI instance, minus the header height and the footer height. We also set the background color and the font color. Colors are defined using CSS syntax. When only three values are set, each one will be doubled up. So hash BBB is actually hash BBBBBB. The content object has the same elements defined each one a different string value. One other difference in this example is we add and position the mesh using the on session start callback and remove it again using the on session end callback. The shape of a canvas UI mesh doesn't have to be a rounded rectangle. Take a look at this example. The UI is in the form of a speech bubble. If we look at app.js in the folder canvas UI shaped and slide down to the create UI method, Notice that the body has a clip path specified. This is an SVG path. You can find editors which will allow you to draw a path that you can then use to shape your UI panel. 
Notice also this example uses a custom Google web font. It's loaded in via the index.html page. If you're using a custom font then you should trigger an update once the fonts are ready using the document.fonts.ready promise. Here we update the speech text. You might wonder where UI update is. It is actually in the render method. Even though render is called repeatedly, the canvas will only actually update if there's been a change of content. So far we've only used text elements on our UI. This example adds an image to the panel. Take a look at app.js in the folder Canvas UI Images. As usual we need to look at the Create UI method. Here we add two elements. Info you should be familiar with, but image is of type IMG. A width value is specified and no height. Height will be automatically calculated to ensure the image retains its correct aspect ratio. When you specify an element of type IMG, the content for this is the path to the image. Now you know how to create a UI panel with static content, but a UI should allow the user to interact with buttons, scroll a panel and apply input and we'll see all those things in action in the next video.